has already responded. Yes, uh, said Mr. Sushant. Mr. Sushant, I, Mr. Sushant, I request you to send a uh, uh, press uh, link to Professor Gwadar Ponda. He has sent message. Can you please send him? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please sir, please send him the link. Sir, sir, sir I am sending, sir. Yes, he has sent uh, a message now uh, to sir, resend sir. the link. Uh, so, um, please send him. I, I extend hearty hey, welcome hey, to respected uh, uh, engineer Ashok Kumar Tripathi, uh, former um, Director General, Power Grid Corporation of India. I also. Uh, no, sir, I am sharing, sir. Hearty sir, I am sharing. Welcome uh, to engineer Vishwanath Shastri and uh, thank you, all thank other delegates you, thank you very much. who are joining. Gradually, I am observing more number of uh, uh, delegates and I extend special thanks to our uh, Joint Secretary Engineer Sushant um, for his uh, voluntary efforts uh, since last one week in uh, establishing the link and uh, sharing the link among all others and uh, encouraging you, many sir. new members also uh, to join the program today. After a uh, long interval of uh, around six months, uh, we are uh, assembling here again uh, to um, organize this webinar. And uh, let us hope that uh, after a few months, we will again meet uh, well, in, a, in a physical seminar. I now request Professor Ashok Tripathi to speak two, three lines for uh, our delegates. This is purely unofficial. We, we are yet to officially start our program. We are just discussing. Let's request from Professor Ashok Tripathi to speak few words. We have three eminent speakers today amongst us. First speaker, first invited speaker is, is Engineer V. Govind Rao. Our uh, next speaker will be Professor Sukumar Mishra, uh, Professor of Electrical Engineering Department, IIT Delhi. Our third invited speaker will be Professor Gayadhar Ponda, uh, Professor of Electrical Engineering Department of NIT Meghalaya. And we have also invited uh, Professor Chandan Kumar Chunda, uh, um, Professor Electrical Engineering Department uh, of uh, IIEST uh, Sipur, Howda, as the chief guest, and also he will inaugurate the program today. We have with us our Revolt President, Dr. Engineer Prabhakar Swami, and uh, we have with us our all executive body member of Indian Engineering Congress. Indian Energy Congress, Professor Ashok Tripathi is present, and uh, uh, in, uh, our engineer S.K. Sahu, Secretary, mm -hmm. is present, engineer Khirod Mohapatro is present, engineer uh, Dr. Uh, um, Divakar uh, Sir is also um, present here. And uh, I want to know uh, whether uh, Professor uh, Gwadar Ponda could uh, join. Uh, whether Professor Gwadar Ponda could join. Sir, I have shared the link, sir. Right, right, right. Professor Mishra is present here. Professor Sukumar Mishra. I, I have already talked with him. And he will join in time.
So sir, uh, should we start now or we can wait two three minutes more? Sir, just we will wait uh, joining sir participants. Chanda has joined. Ah uh, yes sir, Professor Chandra. Professor Chandan Kumar Chanda has already joined. Yes yes, I have joined. He has joined oh. in time. Welcome sir. welcome welcome. Good evening sir. Okay, good evening uh, to all of you. So we were little worried for the weather. We thought that there may be some uh, uh, electronic uh, disruption, uh, but uh, what I feel now, we are uh, joined with each other uh, very closely, and uh, weather has no adverse effect in uh, our webinar. Sir, and uh, let us hope that uh, we can uh, continue smoothly with the uh, address of all our invited speakers and chief guests, and uh, uh, a special. A hearty welcome to all the delegates and also particularly the new delegates uh, who have joined today. And let us uh, hope that uh, we will get their uh, strong association in coming days uh, to uh, proceed. Mm. Mr. Sushant, sir. So, uh, have you the phone number of uh, Professor Sukumar Mishra? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, you will send read. him um, the link again. Okay, okay, okay sir. Okay. Uh, he has also faced some problem. Sir, sir, sir. <laughs> Both. So we feel very happy and proud to interact with the Professor Ashok Tripathi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Professor Chandan Kumar Chanda, sir, I just want to introduce you with Professor Ashok Kumar Tripathi with you. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, amongst us, nice, nice, nice to meet Professor Tripathi on virtual world. Yes, uh, sir, you, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Professor Ashok Tripathi is an alumni of RIC Raurkala. Okay. In the batch 1969, ah, okay. electrical engineering. 1969 electrical. Okay, okay. 1969. Acha. Uh, so uh, he was also lecturer in that college for. Uh, uh, around one year, one, one year, year or more, and he got engineering Indian engineering service. Okay, and left um, the I, yes. Okay. So during his last time before retirement, he was uh, in power grid. Uh, sorry, um, uh, CPRI Central, CPRI, Central, Power, Central Power, Power Research Institute. Ah, yes, he was in CPRI. Yes, he was ah, director yes. general there. Yeah. yeah. So he is very active in organizing seminars, workshops in our state and also outside. And he is closely associated with IEEE activities and yeah. also uh, many programs uh, organized in the state level, in the mm -hmm. uh, national level. Um, he is our uh, advisor and guide um, in you, organizing Thank various you. activities. Thank you. We really. always get support uh, from him, and uh, he is a great asset uh, for our newly uh, established organization that is Indian Energy Congress. Thank you. Actually, he is an old man with uh, so much experience, vast experience, you know. So, naturally, he must be an asset for all of us. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Uh, and Dr. Wanakula is already joined. 
नमस्कार 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 गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज सर नमस्कार नमस्कार एक्सेलेंट हार्टी वेलकम एंड माय टीचर इज देयर सर पंडा यस 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 डॉक्टर पंडा आई कैन सी यू एक्चुअली या नमस्कार सर पंडा वेलकम या या थैंक यू सर इट्स अ नाइस मोमेंट फॉर अस इट इज वी आर कनेक्टेड फ्रॉम डिफरेंट प्लेसेस फॉर दिस वेबिनार इट इज इट इज अ री रीयूनियन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस फॉर इंडियन एनर्जी कांग्रेस सर सर आई थिंक हैज नॉट जॉइंड सो फार सुकुमार मिश्र या या सो आई हैव सेंट हिम लिंक ओके सो लेट अस सी प्रोफेसर सुशांत है यू हैव ऑलरेडी सेंट द लिंक टू प्रोफेसर मिश्रो हां सर सारी जॉइनिंग सर सम प्रॉब्लम इज देयर टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम सारी जॉइनिंग सर ओके 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 थैंक यू वेरी मच बट आई आई फील वी कैन स्टार्ट नाउ लेट ऑल अदर्स जॉइन वन बाय वन respected uh, presidents of indian energy congress uh, dr engineer prabhakar swai our chief guest of the session professor chandan kumar chanda professor electrical engineering department iiest sipur howda our invited speaker engineer v govind rao former chief general manager power grid corporation of india limited bangalore professor sukumar mishra our invited speaker professor electrical engineering department of iit delhi professor gayadhar panda professor electrical engineering department of nit meghalaya our invited speaker our advisor and guide professor ashok tripathi our secretary professor uh, professor sk sahu and also our joint secretary engineer sk sethi our um, uh, executive body mem- members and uh, all invited delegates i extend a hearty welcome to all our invited speakers chief guests and all the delegates present for this uh, national level webinar organized by indian energy congress today on the topic grid resilience with renewable energy uh, sources and uh, i shall now it is my opportunity uh, to very briefly uh, speak two three lines about the indian energy congress and also have brief introduction of our invited uh, speakers uh, who have been kind enough uh, to join this webinar today and to share their important uh, views and ideas uh, among all our delegates so indian energy congress is an organization of engineers which was established on 7th august 2019 under society's registration act of 1860 as a registered professional society its basic objective is to create awareness bring thought leaders and researchers in energy sectors together and lead various initiatives to address the energy challenges that our humanity faces today the basic aims and objectives of the societies are to undertake intensive study and research in engineering with a multidisciplinary approach in developing energy resources and their utilization to promote awareness among people about the production conservation and utilization of energy and to create awareness in the society to protect environment and to develop social energy responsibility so uh, now it is my privilege uh, to introduce our revered uh, president 
uh, of the Indian Energy Congress, uh, Dr. Engineer Prabhakar Swain, born in the year 1951. Dr. Prabhakar Swain is a uh, graduate of Regional Engineering College Raurkela, uh, presently known as NIT Raurkela, in the year 1975. Later on, he also completed his uh, LLB degree from Olsudan Law College, Kotak, under Utkal University. And uh, he was strongly associated uh, with the Odisha State Electricity Board. Um, and uh, he uh, successfully contributed to the state of Odisha uh, in the rank of uh, assistant engineer, executive engineer, superintending engineer, chief engineer, and also in the rank of engineer in chief as secretary Odisha Electricity Regulatory Commission. So he had his uh, super in the year uh, 2012. But apart from his uh, uh, professional contribution to the uh, state of Odisha, uh, he has tremendous uh, special uh, contribution uh, in the field of Odisha uh, and English literature. Uh, from his student days in R.C. Raurkala, uh, he was associated um, with the uh, city intellectuals in organizing uh, many um, um, activities uh, for the promotion and development of uh, English and Odia literature. And now he is the founder of uh, Sala Saito Sangshad established in and Kotak, and he is the founder and he is also the president of Sala Saito Sangshad. And in his own capacity, in his individual capacity, he has uh, devoted his 30 40 years uh, time in establishing a marvelous uh, structure uh, in the city of Kotak um, uh, um, without any government support. But uh, from different uh, sources only, he has uh, uh, successfully uh, co completed the uh, three-story building where in one year more than 100 uh, programs are organized in the state level and also in the national level. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It is my opportunity uh, to introduce our chief guest, uh, uh, Professor uh, Chandan. Uh, Kumar uh, Chanda. He is the uh, professor uh, of electrical engineering um, department of, uh, of IISET uh, Sipur uh, Howda. Uh, he is a graduate of electrical engineering um, from Regional Engineering College Durgapur in the year 1983. Later on, he completed his MTech degree uh, from IIT Kharagpur in the year 1989 and PhD uh, from B College, Bengal Engineering College, Sipur, um, Howda, and the old dam uh, in the year 2003. Uh, so, uh, he has vast teaching and research experience in the diverse field of power systems engineering and also uh, four years uh, experience in the industry. His areas of interest include smart grids, Resiliency, Stability and Renewable Energy. He is a recipient of Tata Rao Gold Medal. He is actively involved in various research projects funded by DST, UGC, AICT and other national level organizations. He has published more than 150 research articles in reputed national and international journals and conferences including 42 research papers in SCI index journals. He is also a member of the editorial board and guest editor of uh, numerous reputed journals. He has authored and co-authored four books in reputed publishing houses like Magrahil, PHI, and also five book chapters in international proceedings. Ten research scholars have got their PhD degree under his supervision, and currently nine more are continuing as research scholars. More than 25 PhD theses has been evaluated by him. He 
he is a senior member of ITPLE, and his areas of interests are one is power systems, then power system stability, voltage stability and security, and deregulation and power system economics, uh, renewable energy, uh, vulnerability analysis, um, power system resiliency. And also uh, um, solar forecasting. I extend hearty welcome uh, to uh, Professor Chanda, who has been very kind enough to join our program today. And we are very much interested to listen from him. Um, just our presidential address is over. It is my opportunity uh, to introduce our first invited speaker. Uh, v. Govind Rao, Mr. V. Govind Rao. So, he is an alumni of Regional Engineering College, uh, Rao Kala. Um, he is the last batch uh, in the five-year degree program uh, from RC Rao Kala. After that, only four-year degree courses uh, started. So, uh, during 1986 to 1988, he had his master degree uh, from the same institute, Regional Engineering College, Raurkala, in the specialization of uh, power electronic systems and uh, communication. And uh, later on, he uh, successfully completed the MBA degree in the specialization of operations uh, from Institute of Management Technology in Gajabad, which is the thesis topic. Reliability Centered Maintenance of USB, EHB, HBDC Transmission Systems. So, he had uh, started his uh, career as executive training uh, electrical in NTPC. Uh, for a brief period, he was also assistant engineer in Odisha State Electricity Board, posted in Odisha at the place Kasinga. During 1986 to 88, he was uh, a faculty member in the Regional Engineering College, uh, Raul Kela. And during 19, September 1988, uh, he was, he, he left uh, RC Raul and joined uh, as Assistant Executive Engineer uh, and Assistant Director in Central Electricity Authority, Ministry of Power, Government of India, uh, through Combined Engineering Service. And later on, he was deputy manager, manager, chief manager. And uh, uh, during 2010 to 2018, he was in Power Grid Corporation of India Limited, Central Transmission Utility, a Maharatna CPSU, Kolar, uh, in the place Tumkur. And uh, he was senior general manager in uh, during 2018 to 2020. And from during 2020 to 21, he was Chief General Man Manager in Power Grid Corporation of India Limited, and where he was in the charge of operation and maintenance of uh, 2,500 megawatt Talcher Kolar HBDC bipolar transmission system. And also he was training in charge for activity trainees for on-job training at all industrial locations. Sir, I extend a hearty welcome uh, to you uh, um, for our webinar. And really, uh, we extend our uh, thankfulness uh, to you for your kind consent to join this program. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhat. Thank you, sir. Um, now, I shall introduce uh, Professor Sukumar Misra. Uh, he is presently continuing as a professor in Electrical Engineering Department in IIT Delhi. And uh, he received his MTech uh, degree uh, from R.C. Raurkala in the year 1992 and PhD from the same institute in the year uh, 2000. And he has many accolades uh, during his uh, professional career. He was awarded with Young Scientist Award by Odisha Vigyan Academy, INSA Medal for Young Scientist in the year 2002. Indian National Academy of INA Young Engineer Award in the year 2002, INA Silver Jubilee Young Engineer Award in the year 2012, Samantha Chandrasekhar Award 
in 2016, Bimal Bose Award in 2019, and NASI Reliance Platinum Jubilee Award in the year 2019. Also, National Mission Innovation Championship Award in 2019, and INAE Outstanding Teachers Award in the year 2021. He has been granted fellowship from academics like NASI India, INAE India, and also professional societies like IET UK, IET India, and Institution of Business India. He also has been recognized as the INAE Industry Academic Distinguished Professor. He is currently acting as ABB Chair Professor and has previously delegated as the NTPC, INAE, and Power Grid Chair Professor. He has served as an independent director of Cross Border Power Transmission Company Limited and also the River Engineering Private Limited. Professor Mishra's research expertise lies in the field of power systems, power quality studies, renewable energy, and smart grid. Also, he has been functioning as Associate Dean R&D of IIT Delhi. Uh, from March 2020. He has so far authored more than 75 IEEE transactions journals, 30 IET journals, and 30 other international journal papers. He has supervised 31 PhD students, 38 master students. He has authored five book chapters and 16 patents uh, to his credit. He has been working in close association with IEEE Delhi Section Executive Committee for past few years and is currently serving as an editor uh, for the IEEE Transitions on Smart Grid, IEEE Transitions on Sustainable Energy, Current Science, and was an area editor for the IET Generation, Transmission, and Distribution Journal. Thank you, Professor Mishra, for your kind consent to join as an invited speaker today uh, for this uh, webinar. Welcome, I now Professor extend... Mishraji. Welcome, Professor Mishraji. I, I now extend a hearty welcome uh, to Professor Gwadhar Ponda, who is presently continuing as Professor in Electrical Engineering Department in NIT Meghalaya. His research interests include distributed power generation using renewable energy sources, power quality assessment and monitoring, seamless operation of AC-DC microgrid with the optimal power management, and also power electronics and drives. He obtained his PhD degree from Utkal University in Banibhar, Odisha, and during his long professional career, he started his um, academic um, profession in the institute IGIT uh, Sarang. Then he continued in NIST Barampur as lecturer and then as assistant professor and also as professor in the uh, same institute till 2009. And uh, from 2009 to 2013, he was again um, posted at uh, IJIT Sarang as assistant professor, and uh, he left IJIT and joined NIT Meghalaya as associate professor in the year 2013. And uh, from 2017 onwards, he is continuing as professor uh, in the same institute. He has uh, contributed uh, for the academic profession uh, very significantly. Uh, he has been uh, awarded by Union Ministry of Energy Department of Power Medal and uh, this uh, power medal has been awarded for one of his research paper, uh, role of transient SBDC boost in the improvement of transient stability of longitudinal power supply system, which was published in the Institution of Engineers India Journal in the Electrical Engineering Division. He also received Best Researcher Institute Award uh, in the year 2015 uh, from NIT Meghalaya. And regarding his editorial activities, he is associated as associate editor 
in international transitions of electrical and energy systems will a also a associate editor in ieee access journal associate editor in international journal of emerging electric power systems and as associate editor in international journal of renewable energy technology indoor science publishers and he has uh, um, already supervised the nine phd scholars and some more are on under progress and he has uh, uh, chaired many conference sessions in ieee conferences in technical program committee of uh, ieee conference in the year 2018 chair person uh, in sigma 2018 he also served uh, um, uh, in the reviewing activity of journals uh, in ieee transactions ieee transaction on industrial electronics on smart grids on industrial information informatics also on sustainable energy also uh, in transportation uh, renewable power generation i i e t generation transmission and distribution journal of franklin institute elsevier apart from this he has he is associated in administrative activities as dean academic affairs as dean faculty welfare as chairman of the institute accreditation committee as member of dpr committee member of research committee convener of library committee and also as head of the department of electrical engineering department regarding some other external activities he is associated with the project proposals um, evaluation in aict and dst selection committee member for recruitment for the uh, post of government engineers also Uh, he is a senior member of i triple e he is a fellow member of institution of engineers india also a life member of indian society for technical education i extend a hearty welcome to uh, professor ponda um, who has been uh, who has extended his consent to address the delegates today in this webinar sir thank you very much for your brief introduction i am uh, very much delighted uh, i also never listen so much introduction for myself uh, any how it's my great pleasure and uh, i thank very much to you as well as uh, our president sir who has uh, invited me to this webinar uh, thank you sir thank you. thank you thank you very much sir and now i invite our uh, president Uh, Dr. Engineer Prabhakar Swain, uh, to extend uh, welcome address uh, for all our delegates and revered guests. Good evening. Good evening to everybody. Respected chief guest of this evening of this national webinar on the topic of resilience with the renewable energy sources organized by the Energy Congress. Professor C. K. Chandraji, distinguished speakers, Professor Sukumar Mishra ji, Professor Gayadhar Pandaji, Engineer B. G. Rao ji, and Secretary General of Indian Energy Congress, Professor P. K. Padi ji, members of Indian Energy Congress, and participants from all over the country and friends. We have invited eminent scholars. to speak on the topic and we'll hear them i welcome everybody the guests and also the participants i'll speak only few lines electricity distributed by the power grid is mostly generated by fossil fuels such as natural gas and coal a decarbonized power grid would instead rely on renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power etc experts agree that the best way for decarbonized electricity countrywide is to incorporate many different forms of renewable energy sources into grid this will require substantial restructuring of the grid architecture grids are originally designed only to provide 
one way flow of electricity from power plants to the consumer nowadays consumers are becoming prosumers that is producer and consumer and additional power from the prosumer that is rooftop solar and small scale wind turbines etc is to be injected into the grid which requires substantial change to the network additionally to overcome the fact that some renewable electricity sources are only available at specific time or under specific conditions such as solar power the decarbonized grid can store energy efficiently resilience refers to how well the rest of the grid is still able to function when one or some of the its components are disrupted upgraded power grid should withstand disruption such as from extreme weather events or even nefarious attacks in the performance of some its, some of its components to upgrade the grid resilience scada that is supervised supervisory control and data acquisition as well as the dms distribution management system is vital and load flow analysis is also equally important to carry out the modeling for upgrading the power grid this model shows the way electricity flows between different users and electricity sources and the way in which disruption somewhere in the grid affects the rest of the grid it is observed that on energy storage and distribution using renewable sources the structural resilience of the grid increases furthermore depending on quantum of renewable energy and stored energy injection in the grid injection should happen at different voltage level like low voltage medium voltage or high voltage basing on the renewable generating station capability energy injection at low voltage or medium voltage level shall help in reduction in losses due to stepping up and again stepping down for flow of energy from renewable sources connected to grid which flow again to the consumers grid needs to be smart and all the components vcv sectionalizers rmu auto reclosers switches etc in the network should be communicable and must work in tandem with other components to achieve the grid this resilience this will help in decarbonize the grid reduce carbon emission increase reliable electricity distribution in the event of uncertainty or unpredictable weather conditions lastly i want to speak few words on indian energy congress already our secretary general professor padi has spoken still i will speak few words this is a professional national body like indian energy congress and indian road congress a person having degree in any discipline of engineering is eligible to become a member of indian energy congress i request everybody to strengthen indian energy congress by increasing its membership thank you all thank you thank you very much sir for your introductory address and welcome address for all our delegates and now i invite professor chandan kumar chanda professor electrical engineering department iiict sipur howrah to inaugurate the program uh, formally and have the inaugural address um, on the theme topic and sir i request you Uh, to confine your presentation within 20 minutes thank you sir professor chandan kumar chanda sir my oh. yeah uh, uh thank you professor fari and i was a little confused because this program is supposed to start from 4 pm and i thought that whether i will address you or wish you 
by good afternoon or good evening because the right from the right from the morning the weather is very cloudy in our place hopefully in your place also so the the thing is that i i'll come slowly i of course there is a time limitation and let me tell you what is happening around in the eastern part of india and where why why we are conducting this indian energy congress today why why it is so much important nowadays so uh esteemed professor uh pari secretary general of iec and uh, esteemed dr provakar swai i already had a talk over phone about his vast knowledge in subject engineer sk shau secretary engineer sk city susanto if i am not wrong uh, you were my student in my institution long back maybe 9 or 10 years back and i always i feel pride whenever my students comes and take a very good positions in the natural due course of time uh, joint secretary of iec and other distinguished organizing members our knowledgeable uh, man uh, tripathi ji I, i i had sub to him he is a very knowledgeable person and my senior dinash in this regard esteemed and eminent speaker i mean professor uh, engineer vg rao uh, who has worked in, in in practical scenario with the who is the chief general manager of uh, power grid corporation of india limited pg sail he is a huge amount of knowledge from practice point of view and possibly we will talk about the best practices in renewable energy today we will listen very carefully and i do not want to say more about professor mishra is very renowned and energetic professor is working in the direction of smart grid and we are really eager to hear from him and i don't want to say more about professor mishra he is professor in delhi iit and works a lot in the directions and last but not the least my student again in introduction speech he, he told that my teacher is here goyadhar panda is one of the young in heart even though he is not young in age young in heart very energetic and very dynamic i have found and and he is here he will talk about the theme the grid resilience with the renewable energy that you working nicely so far i know and and my dear participants and delegates in this conference so let me start with a little it would uh, this kind of scenario today is the last day of the week sunday time is 4 pm and not only this if we again include this is the last month of the year also but just now i have a, a quick look to the participant side the number of participants are more than 100 100 plus in fact on sunday at 4 pm the all people will go for a small nap and all that instead of that 100 participants are there in this iec obviously the question comes into the back of our mind why so many participants that were the last month of this year and that were the last day of the week and that too at 4 pm whenever i am delivering this lecture from far place howrah i mean this near calcutta is a twin city is incessantly raining from yesterday night with a little wind and not only that this happening in recent past we have faced ampar and the niyas even the name of the storm is java the happening around in the recent past and why you are talking about resiliency let me tell you this resiliency even though if you talk from the dictionary point of view okay this is fine but we talk from power system point of view and the word we have used in today's webinar is not a is not an old last few years maybe two or three years they are using this word resiliency in power system because we are facing lot of natural calamities without giving any prior intimation heads up to satellite communication you get the information now it is in the prior hand these are the thing happening so the thing is that whenever you talk about the resiliency in the power system the thing is that in the back of our mind it is there we have to face this kind of natural calamity intense storm the the rising level of the sea the 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 what should i say the the pollution in 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 in, in atmosphere global warming 
all these things are happening. Obviously, the next question comes into the back of our mind. Why this is happening? We did not have a wave that this kind of thing at least 20, 25 years back about the energy, resiliency, smart grid, micro grid, mini grid, vega grid, traditional grid. Whatever is the form we are talking about from power system, we never used to discuss or we never used to deliver either in the virtual mode or the physical mode. Why? Even if I go into a little deeper, if I'm not wrong, in the last month from November 1 to November 12, this 2021 I'm talking, almost all leaders of this planet are joined in, in, joined in even climate change summit in Glasgow, Scotland, about the different issues. In fact, in the next year, 2022, again, they're going to meet in Cairo, Egypt, where they're arranging this kind of program by the world leaders. That the president of USA, our country's prime minister, they're joining their end to discuss. Answer is very simple. Very, very simple answer is there. Even the participants with undergraduate background, they can also expect what answer I'm going to give. The answer is very, very simple. Because we have to look into the problem, what Professor Swain just pointed out, we have to go for the deeper decarbonization strategy. Sometimes whenever you talk about this kind of energy issues, sometimes you mix with the money issues and all that. But money is not all. Money is not all. Money cannot bring peace. Money cannot solve this corona issue what is happening for last one and a half year. Two. Money is not that. We need cooperation. We need co co collaboration effect. Apart from advanced technology and all that and all that that is there, either from the academia side or from the research side or from the industry, this is okay. But the mindset is very, very important. What those world leaders used to address this, 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 this climate issues and the climate crisis. In fact, in this year only, we have faced so many intense storms. And once instant storms comes, just imagine, at least as I'm very near to Minnapu district, and I, I not, I'm not going through the paper. I've seen in my oh, 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 millions and millions of people suffer a lot in the eastern and the, that part of that Minnapur, oh. your Bengal side. Millions and millions and million people suffer a lot. Who are responsible for this? The answer is simple. Greenhouse gases. I mean the COX, NOX, SOX, global warming, and all that and all that is huge. Obviously, then question, how to reduce it? If these are the elements are responsible for this kind of problem to offer distress to the ordinary people, to the low men, they are not responsible for that. We, we people are other way around, we are responsible. And one thing we have to keep in our mind is that this, this pollution or the most polluted effect does not know any boundary. If I do kind of pollution, it does not mean be restricted here only in your country. In the atmospheric level, there is no boundary except the aviation side. It will be spread over across this globe and other people will suffer a lot. So we have to take care of these things very seriously. But the question is, there is no one size fits for all solution. There is no ready-made solution. There is no one solution which will fit for all kinds of solution. And one more thing, is this, there is no room for prejudice against one source of energy and other. We are having a lot of alternative energy. We should not keep any kind of prejudice for a particular source of energy. Whenever you talk about solar energy, give emphasis on solar energy. It's not that. Other forms of energy are available. So, if we go back, why all these things are coming into picture? Why at the end of the week and the end of the year we are discussing in this webinar? It is, the issue is the energy. Energy is the main thing that is the important and primary one of this conference. In fact, it is all about energy right from morning to night we are using. We cannot imagine a single moment in our life without energy. That's true. We cannot conduct. And, and in the beginning, uh, Professor Pari mentioned because of this rainy and all that, it, it could have been interrupted because of the storms and, and all that. But it doesn't, because you, you depend, even this webinar is 
because of this, this energy. Without energy, you could not able to conduct this in virtual mode, not even in physical mode for sure. But the question again comes into the back of our mind, where from this energy is coming? If we talk in terms of our country, our country is the third uh, 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 professor, uh, 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 engineer Raoji will able to rectify me if I do the wrong, third largest energy producer in this planet. And third largest consumer, if I forget the prosumer, prosumer part. So most of the energy is coming from the fuel based energy, fuel based, fuel firing based energy, either from coal or from petroleum or from liquid or from uh, natural gases or from nuclear fuel. But the question is this, these are all finite in nature. They will be depleted only in due course of time. And once we burn coal, once we burn nuclear fuel and all that, the question is atmosphere has to be polluted. What we are facing nowadays, in every year, we are facing four or five storms. In USA, they're facing in every fortnight nowadays, if I'm not wrong, every fortnight. Either the eastern part of USA or the north, every fortnight. And they are giving real emphasis on resilience in power system nowadays. Eminent speaker will talk and they will go into deeper, deeper to the subjects, but this is the thing happening around. So the next question is you have to find an alternative. If this energy is finite, of course, these are the finite energies. Maybe 70 years, 75 years, 80 years. If we talk about nuclear energy, maybe 100 years, 150 years after that. But the question is, as an engineer, as a scientist, we will never wait up to the last ton of coal or last, last, last liter of petrol. We should not wait for that because almost 8 billion people are, uh, are, are waiting to get the alternative forms of energy. This is their demand. So you have to go for an alternative. What is the alternative? When you talk about the alternative form of energy, the first thing comes in your mind is sun. And that is true. Sun is finite. Even though it is finite, but numerically speaking, it is not finite. The age of the sun is 5 into 10 to the 9 years. And almost half of the Numerical years has gone out. Only 2.5 into 10 to the 9 years are left out for the sun. After that, sun will be no more in this uh, in this cosmic area. But the point is that if you talk in terms of human time scale, so 2.5 into 10 to the 9 years, uh, so we are going to get the sun um, for infinite amount of span. And the next thing, if we use sun properly, sun will not come the next day and extend his hand. Please give me because you are using me. This is the direct application of sun. And for statistics sake, I can give an example. In every moment, 1,74,000 trillion watts are coming from the sky every moment. 1,74,000 trillion watts from the sky. So God has already given a power station on the sky that you are not thinking properly. There is a power station given by God which is offering one lakh seventy. And if we can utilize 20% of that energy which is coming every instant on the earth's surface, only 20%, I'm repeating this percentage, 20%, for one hour, it can cover this planet for the whole year. Total world's energy consumption of one year can be covered if we can utilize 20% of the energy what is receiving on our surface from sun for one hour only. So what is the deficit from our end? Is it the solar energy is a rocket science? The answer is no, it is not a rocket science. Well, maybe, maybe some other issues are there about the efficiency of the solar cell. Th that I'm not going to discuss in this topic, time is limited. But the thing is that it is not a rocket science. And one more point I must emphasize in this inaugural address because of this atmospheric pollution. You see, these eight, mil, 8 billion people wants their stable health and stable climate as well as the stable economy. What has happened for last one and a half year and or two years almost? Even the few days back, again, we, uh, we have gotten information from WHO the another virus with a much more powerful has come, name is Omicron. That is one of the alphabet of Greek letter. We are not sure, thank God, maybe all the letters of the Greek will be covered by this variant. Already Delta is there, Delta Plus, 
then Omicron has got the small by capital O. We, we are not quite sure. But if you go into deeper into this, the stable health and stable economy, the reason is pollution and burning fossil fuels. We cannot ignore it. We have to accept it. So we have to use the sun's energy. The moment we talk about sun's energy in this kind of forum, the questions are there, are what? there is a huge amount of variations in this energy. From morning to evening, there is a variation. Night, there is no sun at all. But again, we have to believe in God. Thanks, God. Even though there is no sun in night time, but wind is here. Wind and sun is complementary to each other. And even though we cannot extract energy from the sun directly, there are indirect effects of sun is here. Whatever the energy we receive, we receive energy from coal-based power station. That is again indirect influence of sun. Because of the pressing for thousand years, and where from that wood has come, wood has come because of the presence of sun. So this is all indirect application of sun. Where from the wind energy is coming? Wind is energy coming from sun. Because of the different temperatures and pressures in atmosphere, wind blows. So wind energy comes. If there is no sun, we cannot think of wind. So where from this wave energy is coming? Wave energy is coming because of this, because of this wind. And wind is coming from the sun. When the wave, when the when the wind blows through ocean, wave creates so wave energy. So almost all kinds of energy God is sun. And in fact, in our country, we worship God, sun as a God, because he is the source of energy. And let me tell you why we told you it is not a rocket science. If we go back 350 years back, 400 back, that time, we do not have that much amount of technology or engineering or science. We used to burn the paper by concentrating sun rays with a convex lens. So the technology is not a new one. 350 years back, they used to burn the paper by using concentrating uh, this, this, this this sun's rays. Even though yes, we have started thinking about sonar G for last uh, 25 or 30 years, but the question is, this is not the new thing. But only point, let me tell you, very free and frankly and honestly, the mindset. And once we can harness the energy from the sun, it is harnessing money. That is true. So we have to emphasis solar energy, sun's potential is infinite. We have to explore sun's energy. And I am repeating this sentence again and again. This is not a rocket science. Of course, and, and, and of course, because of the advancement of electronics, communication, information technology, I mean ICT, it is not at all a complicated science nowadays. So we have to create a right amount of mindset by which we can generate the power, we can consume in your own what is called as a projima. If we are having a deficit, we can collect the power from the grid, mini grid or micro grid or whatever it is, or the traditional grid, or if there is a surplus, we can give to the next neighbor, 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 or neighbor, neighbor people. So these are the things that are to be developed by using this energy. And one more important thing is that we have to handle the stochastic nature of this, 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 this renewable energy. What does it mean, stochastic? Huge amount of variability. variability. But this variability will be, can be controlled by the power electronics people. Like Professor Panda, there, there, the variability can be able to control. And not only that, we can go for a lot of techniques and, and, and programming are available. We can go for a forecasting. They have already forecasted. This, 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 this summit already forecasted by 2030. The, the, the carbon reduction should be in the tune of 60, 65 percent by 2040. It should be 80 percent by 2050. It should be 100 percent decarbonization. And in fact, this is the average value or the mean value. Few countries like Denmark and Australia, they have already moved in the tune of 85%, 90% power with low carbon or zero carbon. They are having their will to do that. There will be no carbon, carbon footprint in their country. They have decided it. No more carbon footprints. So thing is this, if we think in that angle, decarbonization, low or low carbonization, low carbon footprint, we have to catch hold this this alternative energy in different forms. We, we do not have we should not keep any bias on that. But the point is there. Point is this: 
in a developing countries like us we always try to maybe i am not quite sure uh, engineer sub uh, that that tripathi sahib and and rao sahib probably able to answer these questions we 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 and and politicians have to play a very important role also i should not escape this point i do not much understand about this this side as a teacher but they have to play a very very important and vital role because as a developing country you always believe in short term benefit not long term benefit short term benefit me bring coal bring the imported coals also burn it and get power that's all but the capital investment of solar energy is tremendous you need huge amount of area and all that and the moment you, you install it forget for 25 years it will go on generating if everything goes smooth at least amount of maintenance and all that but we we we, we people believe in short term benefit and we we are uh, we, we are in that side so these are the things are generally nowadays happening around so another important aspect of this renewable energy and resiliency is this different kinds of grid development because nowadays that the question comes if renewable energy comes will it solve the problem how to meet this variability how to meet this stochasticness okay we have to go for a intelligent mix of the energy if sun is not there if you are stick to the renewable energy will it wind in the night if wind is not not there will you wave so if you go with a right mix of renewable energy forget that part because that part is going to be exhausted within few years we are not thinking and already our earth mother earth is already wounded we don't want to water because of these things we are facing number of storms and all that and all that intense storms we don't want to water anymore this is our target so if you go with a right mix of these things that may be important issue and they are complementary i told in one part of my this delivery they are complementary we mostly i don't want to mean it does not blow in the day time but mostly blow in the night time they are complementary another important aspect is the demand side management by intelligent control what does it mean by intelligent control demand side in a national level the people have to think for demand if you want to reduce the peak of the national load by putting the fridge of a consumer or customer the way defined for 15 minutes in the night time customer will never will come to know whether his fridge is off for 15 minutes or 20 minutes half an hour he is least bothered about it we should not inform you also with an intelligent control approach if you can so that way the demand side approach is another important aspect of this product mix energy mix even though there is a huge amount of variability so variability aspect of the renewable energy can be controlled by different kinds of renewable energy mix by using demand side management by using wide area monitoring control by using smart grid and all that where our eminent speaker they are really knowledgeable in the respective field they will talk and will hear their lectures so these are the issues i i think will be addressed after my delivery in detail so that the speakers will be benefit so these are all issues you have to think i think i have more time no my time was 20 minutes if i am not wrong i i am taking more time no i have crossed yes, 20 sir. minutes yeah yeah so this is all this is all about my uh, general kind of lectures on energy and let me congratulate it uh, congratulate the organizer in the right time they are organizing this program from iic i congratulate themselves i i congratulate them for all, all this kind of arranging seminar and i am humble and feel honored to be here to listen their lecture okay professor mr is giving you ah hello professor mr i am not audible no uh, oh am i uh, let me ask them are you was audible Yes, yes, sir. Very much. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Oh, the audience. other other audience people, Professor Mishra, they are telling they can maybe some uh, issue <laughs> in your microphone. I am not quite sure. <laughs> I have not seen. Lot, lot of charts were coming that you are not audible. Oh, acha, 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 acha. I, I, I do not know. Probably. Yeah. Speak near to the mic. Yeah. So that it 
Ah, yeah, 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 it, it it might be, but my time is the time is limited to twenty minutes. That the twenty minutes are over, so I am handing over to next speaker and uh, and and uh, and and thank you for we'll delivering. Okay. Thank thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Your your presentation was hundred percent audible, and uh, we enjoyed your presentation. And sir, uh, it is a debatable issue uh, whether we should. Uh, Go for in renewable energy, or we should use our traditional energy sources. And now, I thank you very much, Professor, for your very exciting address, which has been very very impressive for me among and for all other delegates. And I, on behalf of the organization, extend special thanks and appreciation to you. And we expect that. Uh, you, we will get your your support and guidance in coming days. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure, certainly, certainly. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you, you sir, so much. Sir. Thank, thank you so much. much. Okay. Now I invite our uh, first invited speaker, uh, Engineer B. Govind Rao. Uh, he will address now on the topic and grid stability, reliability, and resilience with renewable energy resources. And sir, I request you to confine your presentation. Minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Pardi. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, uh, Swainsir, professors, and uh, all the yeah, panelists, no. and all uh, the participants here. And uh, I have been honored, really, uh, by Indian Energy Congress, which I came to know only a, uh, a week or uh, ten days back. And I was very happy that one of my seniors from my college is the president and is the founder, and is so energetic in at the age of seventy, because I passed out in eighty four. Uh, so I, my all uh, 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 thanks and uh, gratitude uh, to Dr. Swain, and uh, I'm really uh, in an elite group now because as. Uh, 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 told earlier by Professor Chanda and uh, my Professor Padi, I have been at the field only, and uh, when uh, Professor Padi told me about renewable energy, though I have been not directly in the renewable energy, I was with uh, uh, high voltage uh, man, uh, systems in Corgit Corporation of India, mainly uh, with fact devices like all HVDC transmissions, statcoms, and SVCs. I have been handling uh, some from start to and from engineering up to operation also but uh, uh, fortunately i be, i when i was in bangalore i was involved uh, in this uh, renewable energy management center establishment which was given to power grid so as the concept paper just i will show so i thought uh, why not uh, involve myself and uh, listen to so many um, elite uh, 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 speakers and also the professors who have been on this uh, new technology, which has to be there, as Professor Chanda has told, and Professor Panda, we have been working on the power electronic devices. So I thought uh, I will go through some uh, electrical journals and IEEE uh, papers so that to can I can update myself because I am away from the real subject. I have been at the site. So with this, just I want to uh, introduce uh, to see what. Uh, I had myself uh, working in Central Electricity Authority and also uh, in uh, uh, Power Grid Corporation of India. Uh, uh, just I will share my experience, though it may not be uh, as I don't know how much is expectation from the Indian Energy Congress, which is a really a great uh, uh, platform to share. So I have been involved in this uh, uh, regional uh, power grids initially with Central Electricity Authority. And uh, I was there to connect because when it was there, we had uh, five frequencies earlier. Later, we had one frequency for the new grid, we used to call it, that is Northeast, Northeastern and Western. And Southern grid was different with a separate electrical frequency. And we were having all the interregional flow uh, through the HVDC links at uh, places like Chandrapur, Vaijag, and Sasaram and Vindhyachal which are connecting the all the uh, five four grids basically for the eg power flow and also the bipolar links we had established especially ntpc started
from uh, Rehan Dadri. Later, we had developed a quite number of uh, high voltage uh, DC transmission, which has been one of the instrumental in maintaining the power system of entire uh, national grid. So when uh, we had uh, the uh, grid disturbance on 31st July 2012, I think most of us remember it was a very, uh, uh, very severe one and entire uh, new grid uh, went blackout and only the southern region was left out. So at that time also uh, I was instrumental uh, at uh, uh, Collar, uh, HVDC system, that is Talcher to Collar system uh, to uh, extend the supply to Talcher and to restart the entire uh, power supply to all the 28 states. I, I was very much there for the almost like 36 hours in the control room. So later, uh, this was happening as uh, our professor uh, uh, Chanda also told, because of lack of the strength, because the system was not so, so strong, because of a small fault on western northern grid, the entire uh, grid uh, went off. And that was the biggest lesson just to go how to go for national grid. So. Finally, uh, Power Grid Corporation had finalized the 765 kV transmission lines. We had come that HVAC. And with Solapur, Raichur, uh, we had done the final integration of the uh, southern grid with the new grid. And that time we had the one nation, one grid, one frequency concept. That is on the 31st December 2014, I was there in our control room. And we were so happy that it was one of the memorable period uh, for power system engineers and also all the uh, electrical utilities. And after that, uh, I have been there in the system, uh, in the uh, both in the uh, regional uh, transmission and asset, man uh, asset management centers, what we call now, uh, in parallel with uh, RLDCs. And we have uh, seen uh, uh, the strength has gone because the strengthening of the transmission system along with the HVDC, STATCOMs and everything, it has become so uh, good that the inertia, the strength of the system has uh, become manifold. And later after that, we never had any uh, grid disturbance, even uh, to the even minor in a state also, though that was a uh, thing. And though I cannot call it uh, highly resilient grid because the reserves were not available and also uh, because of uh, uh, other issues, the hydro reservoirs in the southern states were not with full water. And because of that, there were no either cold reserve, uh, reserves or the uh, hot reserves. So the system was stable. It was a good stability. And it was uh, 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 maintained by no National Load Display Center. It is a part of Power Grid Corporation of India. And now it has become Power System Operation Corporation of India Limited, POSOCO, but that be in 2018. So this uh, NLDC was the uh, 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 system operator. And with what our, our uh, Dr. Swai and Professor Chanda told, with all the system studies and everything, we had the, uh, the grid stability and reliability also increased to a large extent. And prior to uh, this, uh, the very word, what uh, resiliency, what Professor Chanda told, it is very off late phenomena because of these natural disasters and other even uh, uh, the, uh, what you call the hacking of the systems and uh, you see the system, uh, hack, uh, what you call network security uh, weakening. Uh, this resiliency has come in uh, the word, but earlier we are using uh, mainly the availability and reliability concept in our uh, national grid transmission where the uh, things uh, where availability based uh, uh, system control used to be there and later when the availability is not sufficient because availability is not going to give the power quality because availability is not a measure that means one uh, gen one transmission line or one generator suppose it is uh, uh, out for three days in a year and it tells that I am at 99.00 uh, uh, availability. I am very, very uh, uh, good uh, system, but that is not acceptable as per the ministry regulations. And after that, the reliability uh, concept has come so that the power quality to the end consumer has to be maintained so that the minimum 
number of interruptions to be uh, per uh, element. That means any transmission line or a generator or any switchyard equipment, the number of uh, uh, interruptions is calculated. That means let us say one in 100 transmission lines. So more than one tripping in uh, 100 transmission lines, if they more than one, more than two, or more than three, there will be a penalty to Power Grid Corporation of India. So that is how the reliability-based uh, 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 like system control came in. It was there. Uh, it is still there, of course. Though later, when this uh, uh, the concept of this renewable energy sources, because as uh, Professor Chanda elaborately uh, uh, explained. Uh, uh, not only the COP26, but what the climate change and how we have to protect our earth. That is the base. And also how to, uh, that is the one part of the climate change because depletion of natural resources and uh, all everything he has already covered. And also now we have to see how to have a resilient economy without spending a lot of money uh, to the all uh, uh, world systems uh, which are there. Uh, and also to see uh, that uh, though the major hydrogen projects have been envisaged in last 15 to 20 years, they have been almost stopped now and uh, no more uh, hydrogen projects uh, have been coming because as you know, they, they have got a gestation period long time and also they are highly detrimental to the climate, uh, like the environment, which is having a huge effect on the climate change. And as Dr. Swain uh, pointed out, decarbonization of electricity, like means whatever the electricity we are getting from all the conventional or traditional energy sources, that is thermal, fossil, nuclear, and all oil-based or gas, natural gas-based, that we have to uh, uh, get rid of. And we have to be in the, uh, we have to survive and by harnessing our the huge potential what Professor Chanda just now explained. So that we have to get into the, uh, uh, that is the only way. So the challenges, as he told, will be the, it is a variability, variability and intermittency and also uh, the uncertainty. So for that, uh, in fact, uh, uh, these uh, uh, things, whatever we're having, if you uh, see, the challenges just I have mentioned, but these are as of uh, uh, now, but with the new technology, we'll come up with so many other things. And here, because uh, uh, I have given introduction like the wind, gen uh, the wind generators, which have been now uh, that induction generators, they will be uh, used, used like uh, they, they take a lot of uh, reactive power. So they need a lot of capacitors around and they will not be able to support to the transmission grid, that means the total uh, national grid, in a, whenever uh, there is a, a low generation, because the transmission lines generally will have the Ferranti effect, and they have to either be taken out or they have to be tripped on their high voltage levels. So now with the new systems, we will be better off, like doubly fed and inverter based systems that I will come later, and also the solar. Uh, 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 PV cells. Uh, I have been uh, in direct contact with a project, 2000 megawatt uh, project in Pavagada in Karnataka. Uh, I have been maintaining the commissioning of uh, the associated transmission system, uh, which is a very huge uh, 400 kV by 220 kV system. So I had some uh, a, a idea about how they were doing the PV cells, and of course. They are a, a old generation, uh, not, not again, sorry, there is not much, uh, very old. So the PV cells which had been installed in 2018, 19, uh, and they are of a modern type. No, no uh, they are not uh, uh, latest state of art technology, but. We have lost audio. 
Is it audible? No, audio, audio is lost. Audio uh, is not right. Huh? Uh, uh, is it uh, audible? You okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now it is okay. Uh, uh, you can interrupt me uh, because I am not a professional professor like most of my panelists. So uh, uh, I, uh, I will try to uh, go in a practical way. I will have some. Uh, uh, this meeting is being also. recorded. But, uh, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please yeah. continue. Uh, yeah. I'll take two, three minutes more, sir. Okay, well, just I will take a bit more. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so, uh, for this uh, uh, this national grid integration uh, with these uh, renewable uh, energy sources, uh, we established uh, this region, uh, renewable energy management centers at SRDC Bangalore, which will take care of this uh, uh, AP uh, Tamil Nadu Karnataka and also at uh, WRLDC, that is Western Regional Load Space Center, Bombay. Gujarat, Maharashtra, MP, and NRDC in Rajasthan. So these uh, seven states, uh, uh, where uh, this is the concept paper, which uh, we had to see that uh, we are uh, supposed to go uh, around 160 gigawatt of wind and solar power to be developed. And seven states have been given, and uh, uh, been given uh, which are the RE rich states. And uh, uh, the good part is that here, uh, there is, uh, if you see, the thermal power, which uh, is also like NTPC, I was there and I also have a lot of friends. Now also, if you go for a uh, thermal power station, it will not be less than six crores per megawatt. Whereas when we are thinking about 100 gigawatt initially with the uh, establishment of REMCs and connections, so it is also coming almost to the same capex, capital expenditure. So that itself is a very highly encouraging. So that now we can think of and also already we are doing it. And if you see uh, the RE presentation, because I visited uh, after talking to party, I visited REMC, which we had actually established and commissioned. So uh, we you can see now the uh, renewable energy penetration in southern region. I'm giving only southern region now, as of now. So and, uh, uh, like uh, it is almost. Uh, if you see the power wise, it is almost 50% penetration is already there. That that itself is, uh, I felt very happy because I was not knowing before uh, I went there. I was thinking still it is in the uh, uh, lower level only. But with this also, when I talk to the RLDC people, that system operator, though they are finding some uh, problem with the uh, uh, like control uh, of the grid during the night hours and other uh, times uh, and if you see the MU also, it, though it is not 50%, the MU in the southern region that RE penetration only uh, this uh, uh, wind and uh, solar is almost 33-34% is there in the last year. This year it has increased and if you see the all India figures, uh, it is around 97,000 megawatt. Uh, if I actually I could not get uh, uh, the figures from uh, uh, others like uh, uh, WRLC and uh, uh, NRDC from my friends. So I, I uh, thought of putting here uh, how this is working. Just I will give you samples because we are all engineers and we have been talking about it. So if you see uh, Southern Region Max, this is the uh, uh, co data collected. And uh, as uh, uh, our Professor Chanda told, the whatever the uh, artificial intelligence is being used for the forecasting and uh, the data acquisition system we had implemented i was one of the key members in the scada and communication uh, for the regional for srldc that is bangalore uh, remc so you see the curve here i think uh, as professor chanda told you we are blessed with all type of energies so we have to now mix and optimize so that the decarbonization is maximum. That means the pollution, which is coming from the thermal plants or any other plant, and also uh, without depending or going for any uh, major hydro projects, only small micro hydro we can have, which is also renewable energy we are calling, are uh, the uh, new energies, new uh, alternatives. And this is how it looks like. I never imagined till I went to that RLDC to see this type of a curve with the wind and also the uh, solar. You see, almost it is 
uh, uh, taking uh, the uh, the are you role presenting of... anything are you are you able to see it sir no no okay. no I, I am showing the curves here no if you are presenting you are not able to see anything from the beginning you are able to hear you only no this you are not able to see sir this uh... oh, oh, we are only listening how to oh, sir oh, kindly oh. share the screen so sir anything but we are able to hear you okay no no i have got powerpoint presentation okay but i am putting it on the screen only no uh Uh, sir, there may be some problem, but uh, okay. I suggest you to continue uh, because we may face again problem in seeing the slide. Yes. Okay. But it should come automatically now because when you are able to see me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, no, no, no. Huh? You have to say that on the. You you can see that on the bottom there is a arrow. Okay. On, okay. on your computer. Uh huh. On the bottom, you may be having your mic, then camera, then there will be one arm sort of thing. Then there is a screen share. Okay. I don't know. I think it has gone out. It's okay, okay. I'm not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why I come out of the Google. I do not understand. Okay, sir. Please continue. Because, yeah, I will continue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Already, you have uh, I, I uh, you have completed. Like... We are hearing. Let us to complete. No, sir, please no, complete. Yeah. Uh, within two, three days, huh? two, three minutes more because yeah. we have two yeah, more yeah. experts to present. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, yeah, sir. Just one second. Uh. Okay, with that, actually, what uh, is it audible, sir? Now, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Uh, initially, I I had a mistake yes. here. In fact, the play. okay. So here, uh, what uh, uh, I want to tell the grid. Uh, 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 reliability and the resilience. Uh, so here, what we have to go is how to uh, see that asset management of all the uh, uh, transmission assets, generator assets, all the Grid assets are have been without uh, any problem, without any failure, and also the congestion of any elements. Are you able to get me, sir? Yeah, it is not visible. Yes, but please go ahead. Uh, is it audible, sir? Audible, sir. Audible. Okay. Well, audible. Okay. Thank you, sir. So with that, uh, I just I wanted to uh, see with the new technologies coming up. And we will not have as uh, 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 demand side management everything. We will have all these major, uh, uh, like uh, we have already done hundred uh, uh, gigawatt of uh, RE power into the system, and maybe by 2022 we will uh, commission around 160 gigawatt uh, RE power. But the controllability and maintainability. And how to increase the resiliency with the new technology, especially the inverter-based uh, resources, and whatever the new uh, like uh, RE uh, sources are coming up. So that will uh, decide how uh, best uh, resiliency we can have, and uh, how we can uh, meet all the future challenges. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much, sir, for your very. Pleasant and wonderful presentation. Uh, we could not observe the slides, but uh, your presentation was very clear. And uh, special thanks to you for you, your um, interest uh, in this regard. And sir, uh, we will interact with you in future programs, organize which will be organized by Indian Energy Congress. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, sir. Now we in we invite uh, Professor. Uh, Sukumar Mishra, uh, Professor IIT Delhi. I have already presented uh, uh, briefly about his introduction among the delegates. Um, I think he is present now. Professor Mishra, Professor Sukumar Mishra. Well, yeah. Welcome you, sir. Welcome you. Yeah. Thank you. 
please start your presentation sir i have already made an introduction about you among all the delegates uh, in the beginning thank you thank you i'm just sharing my Welcome, ppt sir mr ji just sharing my slide if it is possible coming let me just see you all are in the google meet i hope sir sir so this is taking some time anyway in the meantime I'll let me start so many things has already been told in the perspective of mount grid and renewable energy penetration into the grid the basic philosophy in the indian context in the area of renewable energy is to increase the solar photovoltaic penetration in a big way no doubt we are also going in a big way regarding the wind energy penetration also these penetrations as already told are quite variable in nature now when it becomes variable in nature then we have two options to go for its controllability one is we should have good amount of uh forecasting tools which are quite accurate and that accuracy will make the forecasting more accurate now even if you make the forecasting accurate there will be certain amount of uncertainty always present in the in the context of your renewable energy are you able to see my slide now no sir no it's not coming sir not coming no sir it is not visible sir just hold on is it visible now yes yes sir yes sir coming coming now yes, yes, yes. coming yes professor yes yes uh, full screen slide so are you able to see yes. the full screen yes yes sir yes. Yes. yes so what i was mentioning is regarding the controllability aspect and you can see that when you ever you go for a photovoltaic uh, integration into the grid this photovoltaic will follow a pv characteristics that is the power versus dc voltage characteristics and it is like a bell shaped sort of thing now when it is a grid integrated system this maximum power point is the, is the point where we want to go for the so this is the maximum power point where we want to operate our solar photovoltaic system and at this point basically the maximum power is obtained and that gives rise to the maximum penetration and extraction of renewable energy possible to the grid on the other hand this grid integration overcomes lot of uh, storage requirement in the initial stage later on maybe we can integrate more and more storage when the storage cost becomes lower 
But there is again one important point we should remember that if we try to operate always at the MPPT, that is the maximum power, then there will be fluctuation due to radiation variation. Hence, there are certain proposals that instead of operating at the maximum point, operate at a derated operating point so that No audio, please. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Mr. Sir. Let, let us wait a little. One minute. Usually for the network issues. Now, so Kumar Mr. Sir has left the meeting. Some problem is there. I think he has to log in again. I think by mistake, probably he has left. Sorry, joining, sir. Uh, he is trying to join press. Network is on that side. Sikanto, the group that disconnect here, I will connection the end. Answer. Ah, Parisar, let other speaker to speak. It has a connect over there. We can hear your audio. We can carry on. Professor Mishra. He is disconnected. He has left Achha. due to some uh, net yes. problem or any other problem. I shall kindly tell yes, yes, yes. other speaker to uh, speak. Then when Professor Sukumar yes. Mishra will join, then he will speak. speak. Okay, uh, let us uh, welcome yes. Professor Gwadar Ponda uh, to start his presentation. Uh, Happy uh, which uh, he is awaiting and to get his talk. Professor Ponda, yeah. please start now, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me do share my PPT. Okay. Sir, sir will join, sir. Yeah, sir will be joining. Sir, actually that muted. Are I joined already? So you yes, are able to hear me? Yes, sir. We can yes, hear you. What happened? Sir, we can't hear you, sir. Okay, Mr. Sir, please start. 
So up to which point you have heard me? You are showing that maximum power point tracking curve. Achha. Okay. Instead of going for a maximum power point, we are going for a derated derated operating point on that. Term. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yes, 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 sir, yes, sir. So as I was telling, once you make a derated operation, then it is equivalent to your storage to some extent in a limited sense, and hence, in many of our installation. to make the power smooth we are encouraged to go for that and there are certain literature where it has been mentioned that this derating will be much cost effective in the context of putting a storage this have is the derated operation now coming to the the photovoltaic grid connected system specifically the rooftop operation will be like this where there is a grid and the pv and the load is connected so this load when the load is higher than the photovoltaic power the grid will support and when the load is less than the photovoltaic power the power will be fed back to the grid this is called as interactive system or hybrid system and the the operation becomes quite customer friendly and consumers become a prosumer for providing the power to the grid as well as to the load <coughs> so the real and reactive power need to be regulated and the reactive power is regulated by a 90 degree component of current and the real power is regulated by the in phase current and the real power is related to dc voltage fluctuation whereas the reactive power is related to ac voltage fluctuation now coming to the indian context is grid connected photovoltaic system plays a a very vital role <clears throat> on the other hand since this grid connected system without so storage uh, the the reference signal is not obtained in many cases specifically in institutions and little bit bigger establishment they use a diesel generator set to produce the reference mm -hmm. and they operate the photovoltaic the grid connected photovoltaic rather in a in a isolated microgrid fashion so this operation is quite uh, common in the indian scenario to operate the solar photovoltaic grid connected mode to the off grid or the microgrid operation <coughs> now this impact of solar photovoltaic into the grid will play a well again we have lost the audio
सर सर सार लैपटप रे टिके चार्ज नहीं तो डिस्कनेक्ट हो गेले नेक्स्ट स्पीकर कंटिन्यू करन तो तपरे सार को दे देबा सर 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 गोयाधर पंडा सर सर नेक्स्ट यस यस सर पंडा पंडा वो स्टार्ट करन दो वर्तन सर 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 Whether uh, my screen is uh, visible? Yes, it is visible. Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Okay. Okay. Very good evening to. all the respected dignitaries and my uh, dear faculty colleagues uh, those who have joined from nit meghalaya also and uh, delegates as well as participants as we are moving with the uh, out of time uh, i will not be killing your time also much because today is sunday and uh, hopefully i will be completing fast then sukumar sir can join again my topic of presentation will be on grid resilience with sustainable energy and plug in electric vehicles and uh, under this topic i will be covering uh, the first part that is introduction almost uh, presented by the experts as well as uh, our sk chanda sir then uh, i'll be discussing few things on grid resilience with the sustainable energy then next part will be resiliency impact of plug in electric vehicles in smart grid and how this grid resilience can be improved by infusing energy intelligence into the smart grid environment as we move towards an increasing electric world more energy will be produced by decentralized renewable sources that all of us know we are now moving towards the solar power or uh, wind energy system and at the same time we are also now moving towards the electric vehicles to reduce the greenhouse gas emission and uh, when we will go with the power generation with the renewable energy sources and which is the intermittent in nature and mainly depends on the climatic conditions whether i am audible yes please yes okay. yes, yes you are audible uh, then automatically we have to depend on the battery storage system and that part is very much uh, vital because the it also uh, means uh, incurs the huge cost and also the it is very difficult to maintain also for a long time uh and uh, in that case you, we can think of that electric vehicles will be a alternative choice because that can act as a storage device now going to the decarbonization and digitalization leads to a radical transformation of energy landscape Indeed. increasing integration of power from renewable sources often decentralize the system with multi directional energy flows yeah. which possesses challenges to the power grids as we told uh, before also uh, that when we are uh, integrating the renewable sources and uh, now we are the passive consumers but when we will be coming towards the smart grid environment that time we can produce it at, at the same time also we can consume the power then the information technology is very much essential and uh, uh, we can uh, get the accurate information accordingly you have to decide whether you will consume or uh, you can sell the power or uh, you can 
produce the power. And uh, we talk about the grid resiliency with sustainable energy. As I, uh, as already we have discussed that what is the grid resilience, and mainly the grid should be in a position to do the its normal functioning under the very critical conditions like the earthquake, floods, ice storms, etc. What already discussed by Chandra sir, that will not be discussing now. And it is important to focus on ensuring the system can withstand sudden disturbances or unanticipated failures. The grid condition is evaluated based on its functionality, which is grid ability to provide a reliable and good quality of power supply to serve its customers. There are different ways to evaluate the grid resiliency under the different conditions by connecting the wind farm or you can take the pv panels along with the battery system we can analyze the grid stability or grid resiliency as we know that plug-in electric vehicles referred to as an electric drive vehicle is a vehicle which use one or more electric motors for propulsion. A plug-in electric vehicle is a electric vehicle that uses rechargeable batteries or another energy storage device that can be recharged by plugging it into an external source of electric power, usually a normal wall socket. Here you can see there are different ways of uh, charging of the electric vehicles. We can say the vehicle to grid or grid to vehicle. There are three ways of integrating the uh, electric vehicles. That is grid to vehicle, vehicle to building, vehicle to grid. Similarly, there are different ways of uh, charging also. Means uh, in some applications you can go for the level one charging level two means uh, that is a uh, low low charging as well as a semi fast charging fast charging depending on the applications if it is a household uh, purpose you can go for the low level charging if it is a commercial uh, or industry purpose vehicles can be charged too fast because depending on the timing available Impact of the plug-in electric vehicles on grid resilience. A resilience impact is important as a, as the increased use of photo uh, sorry plug-in electric vehicles and especially the clustering of uh, plug-in electric vehicles in one area. Because uh, at a time we cannot uh, charge all the electric vehicles together because it will uh, have a very much impact on the load demand. In that way, you can do some kind of clustering mechanism. And uh, depending on the distance, you can think of which of the vehicles will come fast for the charging purpose. And so that the demand uh, can be, demand side management can be monitored. Here, uh, we told something about that forecasting. Here you can see there are different types of uh, charging that is slow charging or low level charging and another is semi fast charging and fast charging. Depending on the uh, forecasting data, we can think of which of the electric vehicles will be charged fast and at what point of time it should be charged and uh, at what point of time the electric vehicle can be act as a storage and it can be discharged. Here you can see one energy intelligence to improve the grid resiliency. Because uh, what Sir told that uh, artificial intelligence, uh, everything is uh, going to be the future artificial intelligence based energy flow. And that time we have to think how the grid can be stable because a lot of uh, 
inertia will be losing because the conventional power generators will not be there and uh, most of the power will be generated from this renewable source or, or you can say the inner inverter based power and uh, that that time the stability issue will be a major issue but uh, with the data flow big data analytics and artificial intelligence will help which of the loads are essential or the clustering of the loads or you can shift the loads so that you can maintain the balance between the demand and power generation i will be coming to this conclusion the renewable energy is a powerful resource for the future global development in the context of climate change and uh, resources depletion artificial intelligence implies new rules of organizing the activities in order to respond to these new requirements it is necessary to improve the design of uh, energy infrastructure and deployment and production of renewable energy in order to face the multiple challenges that will affect the sector's growth and resilience in the near future a large number of electric vehicles connected to the power grid will add a large scale energy load that may create a, that may create a instability in the grid thank you you now i will conclude my presentation here thank you thank you very much professor ponda for your uh, elaborate presentation uh, within the optimized uh, time factor and, and before i invite uh, our secretary engineer sk sahu i now request uh, professor ashok tripathi uh, to share his uh, uh, words uh, briefly uh, thank you thank you so much for giving me an opportunity Yes, I, I have been listening to these kind of possibilities for quite some time now, and uh, we we are projecting the possibility. And at that stage, although the software and the analysis part of it has gone ahead, uh, they have assumed certain penetration of solar and the wind, and uh, imagining the problems that will come. Uh, hardware has not really caught up to that extent. i have a feeling that uh, because the solar pv cell cost has come down the cost of solar has come down that is quite visible but slowly as you put and input your demand on higher performance from the inverter the cost of inverter is going to be very high and it has already shown a reflection has already come in the market that uh, the more you expect from the solar to control the stability and uh, the network uh, resilience etc from the solar it will be difficult because it has no inertia and in inertia based power system operation and uh, uh, the tripping settings what we have been giving and uh, for the ramp rate and other things things will be different and you may face a lot of uh, trippings at that time so alongside uh, the development of penetration of uh, the renewable energy one should also see whether the uh, equipment uh, ratings and uh, equipment specifications and the protection settings and other things also need to go through a revision or we leave it to learn when things happen and the tripping takes place we revise them it will be all round effort to achieve certain things and there will be a question that time at what cost we are all very ambitious to provide uh, resilience uh, proof and uh, the availability and controllability to an extent which we are not familiar with in india we are accustomed to having some trippings and some on availability and other things so the highest degree of reliability and other things if that is the, uh, the uh, target we may land up into a very high cost which will reflect on the tariff and get public opposition as well as possibility of software being questioned the cost of maintenance cost of changes will be very high you all of you know that the modern digital technology has brought to the world the type of power electronics and the the type of uh, the integrated the circuits that are go going into it are almost a huge and throw type and the, if you face a problem you have to throw it and put a new one so looking into all that possibilities the technology growth will take its own course it will not be as fast as we are predicting it will be slow hardware has to catch up i always propagate in all these uh, forums that 
the technology as it is getting absorbed must penetrate into the college level, school level and the training level of the utilities so that they know how to handle things instead of giving it outright and getting it outsourced through multinational companies. So at this stage, I don't want to take more time, but uh, only a word of caution that let technology speed take its own course, hardware catch up with the software. And uh, in no case, the customer should be burdened with extra burden because of digitalization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your thoughts. Now I invite our Secretary Engineer S.K. Sahu uh, to present his address. Mr. S.K. Sahu, Secretary. Uh, uh, Professor Padhi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can I show two slides which I was interested in? Uh, for yes, our, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, just for uh, three, four right, minutes right. only. Sir. Okay, sir. Okay, no problem. Uh, Please actually, I, I was uh, very. Please hold, sir. Yeah. Please hold, sir. Is it uh, visible now, Professor Party? Yes, yes. yes yeah. 100%. Just I was a bit interested after uh, uh, Professor Tripathi just now was telling. So, uh, this is the southern region. You see how Professor Chanda was talking about is highly practical and that will be in reality. This is how uh, the southern region uh, REMC is uh, uh, actually working now. And latest figures I could not get because there were some restrictions to share on the public domain. Yeah. So I got it last year, that is 20, uh, July 2020. This is how the me megawatt presentation, megawatt, and uh, also uh, each state also we are having, and uh, they're, they're very uh, performing very well. And as uh, Pro uh, Professor Tripathi just told, the stability criteria also I was discussing. And that is, uh, no, though there has been some problems with the uh, present day, whatever is in the system, the uh, uh, PV uh, uh, cell uh, clusters, and now uh, on a uh, uh, like pilot basis, and it has been uh, seen that we are getting the reactive power from the same inverters which are there in Pavagada. I am telling uh, an example of Pavagada, uh, which is there near, near Bangalore. So I was there, and I have seen those uh, 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 system also. So here, whatever during the night time. The, all the transmission lines, which are, there are the seven numbers of uh, uh, 400 kV lines. So they had to trip five uh, 400 kV lines during the night period because the uh, generation becomes zero by 5.30 in the evening. But later, they could uh, see for uh, one and a half months, around 45 days, they had tried. And now uh, the reactive power of uh, around 500 MVA R, that means around 25% uh, of the real output was available during the night, and there had night shifts in the uh, Pavagada, uh, all the uh, uh, that um, clusters, the PV, uh, that uh, uh, solar stations, and uh, they had they could see that the total uh, stability uh, because of the voltage uh, issue, uh, there were there no uh, line was tripped either by uh, hand by uh, or by power voltage, and uh, that they have given a paper to NLDC and uh, power grid and also to uh, C, uh, CRC also. Now, once it is clear, what I find with the present day, we, we, like the uh, RE uh, PV uh, generators, which have been done in the last uh, uh, four or five years, means after 17, 18, they have got uh, inherent capability of the MVR uh, generation also. But as Professor Tripathi told, the conflict will be the cost. 
because the power purchase agreements were for the only the real power so now the rating will be down with the megawatt will come down and you during the daytime and during the night time uh, if they want to use for the controllability of the uh, power grid that means the power system so that issue will come that uh, just i wanted to say big uh, but other uh, uh, wind and all they have to come up now because uh, the uh, the power electronics technology is not available to that extent where it can support uh, the reactive that uh, q portion for the stability of the grid but Uh, i think with the uh, modern technology with the uh, increased cost uh, of course uh, that will be uh, implemented with the new uh, projects and uh, with that i think uh, we will have a better reliable system uh, though it is not uh, as good as the old traditional system and also resiliency as uh, my previous speakers uh, uh, talking about they will be implemented what i am very optimistic after uh, seeing the things in reality Uh, before that i was not that much uh, uh, optimistic optimistic about that how the stability of grid will be achieved and all so i just i wanted to tell thank you thank you very much uh, thank you thank you for clarifying yeah okay thank you thank you very much sir uh, engineer sk sau is present now uh, now i invite engineer sushant kumar sethi our joint secretary uh, to extend vote of thanks but uh, before that i request him And to announce the uh, 10 faculty members, senior faculty members of NIST Barampur, uh, who have joined as new life members of Indian Engineering, Indian Energy Congress, and uh, I also insist that new members who have joined uh, today as delegates, and uh, they should also uh, be interested to join as life members of our organization, Indian Energy Congress. Thank you very much, Mr. Sethi. Please start. सर प्लीज म्यूट सर प्लीज म्यूट सर प्रोफेसर पाढ़ी मिस्टर तरुण पाढ़ी किसी कहवा को चाहते बोध से ही इज रेजिंग हिज हैंड कैन बी एकोमोडेट हिम तरुण प्लीज हेलो तरुण प्लीज स्पीक yeah uh, uh, good evening uh, president and secretary of uh, and all the members delegates member for the indian congress uh, it is audible yes yes yeah uh, i listen uh, from beginning to all the speakers thanks for good uh, and nice presentation but uh, uh, there is two way path for the control of reactive power and the grid stability okay only that is not a problem in generation station also today whatever we are using the all the inverter all have the capability to consume the reactive power and produce the reactive power to give the strength and the resilience and the reliability of the grid Is that all? I mean, have you concluded? I think Mr. Pardi has uh, made his point. Now let us go ahead with our original schedule. Sir, sound is coming. So when? Please mute, sir. Hello. Please mute. Please mute. Please mute. Hello. Hello. हेलो हाँ 
कैन आई कंटिन्यू और यू कंक्लूड कंटिन्यू कंटिन्यू प्लीज कंटिन्यू इन इंटरनेशनल मार्केट एवरी कंट्री आज प्रोड्यूसिंग द आज फॉर द सीयर गाइडलाइन द पीपीसी इंस्टॉल आर द प्लान साइट एंड ग्रीड कैन सपोर्ट इन द रिएक्टिव पावर पीपीसी मींस दैट इज ए पावर प्लांट कंट्रोल एंड बिफोर द चार्जिंग ऑफ एनी रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी आइदर और द थर्मल एंड अदर प्लांट वी हैव टू बिफोर कमीशनिंग वी हैव टू कैरी आउट द ग्रीड कंप्लायंस टेस्ट which can be compiled the stability of the grid as well as the plant can carry out the reactive power or not uh, other than power factor source voltage response and frequency response as well that is not happening in india due to that we are facing some problem there is a question mark for reliability of our grid so government should think about that as per crc guideline every plant to be installed and government to be give the support for the reactive power purchasing when grid required i don't think there is a cost implication when we give some reactive power produce to generating station because if you sign the ppa duly either the plant also consuming some auxiliary consumption he is debit net energy is available so we should in ppa also single line confirmation given if some reactive power required in same price they can purchase grid can purchase to give the stability of the grid so my intention is to say government should think about how to give the grid stability i don't think there is a uh, inverter now whatever you are using the capability to consume the reactive power and producing the reactive power if grid can purchase that in same rate which they are purchasing the generation thank you all tripathi here just one minute I, I, i say i agree that it is possible but on all those extra capabilities what you are deriving from the inverter makes it more costly because you derate it in uh, total uh, mba rating and then uh, achieve that uh, extra extraction of mba no. the cost of megawatt so the cost increases i just told that the hardware cost increases I, I don't say it is. No, that is yeah. Problem. You are right, sir. Sir, you are right. The hardware means only the power plant controller one unit will be installed. We are using all of, almost in Rajasthan also. The government already asked you to uh, install the PPC because if he, some people who are uh, taking the power power purchase agreement in 50 megawatt and they are install 65, 70 megawatt. Sometimes the megawatt uh, they are giving more than the 50 megawatt. So to obstruct that. as for the ppa guideline we have to give the power only for 50 megawatt highest then the ppc will come that is a power plant controller system we can install uh, that is beneficial for both sides for generation plant and the uh, grid also and it it can control the reactive power voltage and frequency as well as the grid so when the part of the grid reactive power will increase then the real power will decrease then there is a loss of uh, uh, developer so for giving some amount of that the reactive consumption with the real power it will suffice the grid reliability that is my uh, point well agreed i think uh... you have to compare the increase in cost vis a vis putting a static wire compensator in the system i, I think maybe it will evolve as we go ahead we will evolve it i mean the best option should be to see that cost is uh, uh, kept minimum yeah yeah, yeah that is a, that is a, that is a no cost implication sir i am purchasing uh, we have it, uh, done uh, uh, mr pardi and uh, mr tripathi thank you very much for your input Uh, so i am calling uh, sisir babu our uh, secretary to to this point sisir babu sir i am audible yes you are perfectly uh, audible please go ahead ah uh, parishad now i will speak yes sir please continue sir कनेक्शन इज नॉट आई मीन द नेटवर्क इज अनस्टेबल 
So let us conclude the session with Susan uh, giving a vote of thanks. Susan, please go ahead. Sir, uh, he is my uh, student, 2004 pass out, and uh, he is right now the uh, construction head of uh, solar in executive post. Uh, sir, I introduce myself. Uh, uh, my professor, Mr. Susan Sethi, is here. He is introducing the Indian Congress Committee organization uh, before also. So I am working uh, as a general manager of operation maintenance of Sterling and Wilson Solar Limited. I have 18 year experience out of that 12 year experience in renewable energy, basically solar. Uh, I, have, I am working now as a operation uh, maintenance south head in Sterling and Wilson. I am passed out from dreams and that time my professor was Mr. Susan Sethi and he introduced me in this organization. Uh, where you are now uh, posted? I am in Delhi. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Susan, thank you, Jai Jagannath. A warm and pleasant evening to one and all present over here. And it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who have worked really hard to make this webinar happen. I, Engineer S.K. Sethi, Joint Secretary, Indian Energy Congress, would like to extend my most sincere thanks to Almighty for his uh, blessings and making today's event a resounding success. On behalf of the webinar committee, I extend my heartfelt thanks to our most revered president of Indian Energy Congress, Dr. Engineer Prabhakar Swain, sir, for his immense support and best guidance to make this webinar successful. Thank you, sir. I extend my gratefulness to my respected teacher and my advisor, Professor Dr. P.K. Padi, sir, with the Secretary General of Indian Energy Congress for encouraging me every time and successfully organizing all such beautiful sessions even during the pandemic. Thank you, sir. I sincerely thank our esteemed inaugurator, come chief guest, my postgraduate teacher, Professor Dr. Chandan Kumar Chandasar, Professor in Electrical Engineering Department of Indian Institute of Science and Technology, Howda Sipur, West Bengal, for accepting our invitation and gracing this webinar as chief guest and inaugurating the national webinar and for giving the valuable time from his busy schedule to enlighten us with his knowledge about the theme area. Thank you, sir, for your valued contribution. I express my gratitude to our esteemed speaker, engineer V.G. Rao, sir, former chief general manager of Power Grid Corporation of India Limited, Bangalore, who enlightened us about the topic grid stability, reliability, and resilience with renewable energy resources. Thank you, sir, for your valued contribution. I express my gratitude to our esteemed speaker, Professor Dr. Sukumar Misra, sir, Professor Electrical Engineering Department, IIT Delhi, who elaborately explained about the topic smart grid, a way forward through his marvelous presentation. Thank you, sir. I express my gratitude to our esteemed speaker, Professor Gayadhar Pandasar, Professor in Electrical Engineering Department, NIT Meghalaya, who briefly and elaborately explained about the topic grid resilience with sustainable energy and plug in electric vehicle and enlighten us. Thank you, sir. I also express my heartfelt thanks and regards to Professor R.P. Mohanty, sir, former Vice Chancellor, Swai University, for his constant motivation and words of appreciation always with us. Thank you, sir. With deep sense of gratitude, I would like to thank our esteemed governing body members, come advisors, Dr. Sukant Kumar Mahapatra, Dr. Divakar Swain, ex-Vice President, PPL, Dr. Priyavata Patnaik, Director, Odisha Electricity Regulatory Commission, Dr. 
ak tripathi sir director general central power research institute engineer sanjeev tripathi ex director uhbc engineer tandeshwar behra chief engineer water resources department engineer propas hindu biswal urisa head power corporation dr ram prasad panda associate professor silicon institute technology engineer khiroj mahapatra registrar nist group of institution engineer sushil mahapatra engineer sushil kumar sahu secretary indian engineering congress engineer ramakant sahu for their constant aid and ever in organizing such a successful event thank you all i would also like to extend a hearty thanks to all the professor heads of the department faculty members staff members of dreams group of institution and other esteemed institution print media brothers for the success of this webinar i extend my thankfulness from the core of my heart to sir the who have become new members yes yes sir i am the list is the do from this i extend my thankfulness from the core of my heart to dr sandipan malik of nist group of institution engineer prabhav mahapatra east coast railway engineer chandan barik engineer tarun kumar padi dr sanjeev kar swa university professor biswajit jana head of the department civil engineering dr abhik chatopadhyay iist sipur dr jk maharana dr simant nand engineer sanak rai and esteemed professor of iit nit for their participation in the webinar and some new members uh, recently joining with us dr sandeepan malik department of electronics communication engineering dr m suresh department of electronics communication engineering professor nilesh dalai school of mechanical engineering professor manoj sahu school of computer science engineering professor vibhuti bhushan misra department of electronics communication engineering dr murthy Chero Prati School of Electrical Engineering, Dr. Ashwini Kumar Nayak School of Electrical Engineering, Dr. Pradyumna Kumar Patra Department of Electronics Communication Engineering, Dr. Sushant Kumar Sahu School of Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Soren Mishra School of Mechanical Engineering. On behalf of Indian Engineering Congress, I welcome you all. My special thanks to our student coordinator, Sarov Panda. Mahavir Singh, Muhammad Farai Isub for their enormous support and cooperation in preparing all the documents and timely technical support. At last, but not the least, a hearty thanks to each and every individual participant from different corners of our country for their active participation. This session was really informative and marvelous one. I hope it shall be helpful to all the participants in their research activities. Once again, I thank you all for your valued contribution to the planning and organizing of this webinar to make it a grand success. And so we come to the conclusion of this event. Thank you, one and all. Good night. Bande utkala jana. I declare the webinar closed here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Way to close the. I'm going to ask them to do it.
Saudara. 